Hi, my name is Radhika Ravirala. I'm a data and analytics specialist at Amazon Web Services. This video is part of the migration to Amazon EMR series, and today's topic is cost optimization. This session is primarily for analytic leaders interested in boosting their organization's core business through cost-effective data analysis, infrastructure managers who are managing on-premises Hadoop clusters but struggling to fulfill scaling requirements for their clusters at a lower cost, and Hadoop users who want the flexibility to launch clusters for experimentation within a certain budget. Cost optimization for Amazon EMR is measured along two dimensions. The compute optimization that can be accomplished through EC2 spot provisioning and auto scaling, and storage optimization that comes through several techniques that you can apply to your data on how it is partitioned, adjusting the file sizes, applying the proper compression encoding, and making sure that you're using the uh, right file formats. If you look into compute uh, optimization, we need to dive a little bit deeper into the components that make up an Amazon EMR cluster. In the Amazon EMR cluster, there are three types of nodes. A master node that manages the cluster, runs the name node and job tracker daemons, core nodes which run the task tracker and data node daemon, and also have the Hadoop distributed file system installed on it. And finally, we have the task nodes which run only the task tracker daemon with no HDFS. Each of these nodes in the cluster can be provisioned in one of the three ways through on-demand instances that let you pay for compute capacity by the hour or second with no long-term commitments. You can also use Amazon EC2 reserved instances that provide significant discount up to 75% compared to on-demand pricing by reserving the capacity for a certain period of time. And finally, we, you can also provision these nodes through spot instances. A spot instance is an unused EC2 instance that is available for less than the on-demand price. When you launch a cluster in Amazon EMR, you can choose to launch master, core, or task instances on spot. Because each type of instance group plays a different role in the cluster, there are implications on launching each node type on spot instances. If you look into the spot instances, the infrastructure that is provided as part of Spot is same as the on-demand uh, instances that you're familiar with, as well as the reserved instances that you use for steady workloads. The pricing is often 70 to 90% uh, off with uh, smooth, infrequent changes with, uh, and no spikes. Similarly, the interruptions that occur in the, in the Spot instance market are only limited and there is a diverse portfolio of instances to choose from when you're provisioning nodes from the uh, spot instance pool. You can turn on spot instances for master nodes, core nodes, or task nodes. However, critical workload should have on-demand master and core nodes. You can launch clusters in the optimal available availability zone based on the capacity and price, which is available through the spot instance advisor. EMR also allows you to launch instances in what is called the uh, instance fleets. Instance fleets let you mix and match instance types and, uh, and, and spot versus on demand for your cluster. You specify a target capacity as a mix of instances. You can choose up to five instances in, with this option. And EMR will attempt to fulfill that capacity from the most suitable pools. EMR automatically replaces interrupted or failed instances with one of the instance types that you have specified. Because Spark is inherently resilient uh, and, and applications continue to running even when you lose a Spot instance. Now the question comes to mind as to what is the right purchase option for the workload that you have. If you have long running clusters and data warehouses, the optimal uh, instance type or the optimal purchasing option is to use a master node uh, on demand as well as uh, a core nodes on demand. If you have cost-driven workloads, Spot is the ideal choice there. 
If you have data critical workloads, it's always recommended to have master and core nodes on demand and use uh, the extra uh, task nodes from the spot pool to increase your processing power and get your workload done quicker. For application testing, absolutely spot is the recommended choice. To reduce costs, you can also scale an Amazon EMR cluster. So auto scaling is one of the features that is provided out of the box through Amazon EMR and you can control uh, the scaling through policies that monitor, that are monitored through CloudWatch metrics. Popular metrics that customers use to scale up or scale down their instances are yawn available memory percentage as well as the containing pending ratio. Let's take an example of a workload that is migrated to the cloud. The x-axis represents the time, and on the y-axis is the cost that a workload incurs when you're running an application. And the blue graph indicates the cost that a particular application incur when it is running. And as you can see from this picture, there are multiple workloads running. Number one indicates a Metastore replication that is happening behind the scenes. And at two, you are paying uh, the maximum price because the capacity has exhausted at that point. And you have a short peak of parallel tasks that are running at uh, the number three indicated in the graph. And there might be multiple straggler jobs as well as mixed workloads that happen in this workload. Now, if you take the same workload and start applying auto scaling on this cluster, the cluster will adapt to, your, uh, to the demand to meet your needs. Uh, you meet the peak through, uh, throughput as well as pay less for the uh, idle time. So as you can see from the graph, the yellow dotted line indicates how the cluster is adapting to the utilization based on your workload. So here is another uh, graph that shows how spot instances can further reduce that cost. As the utilization of your cluster peaks and troughs, uh, through application of auto scaling as well as spot instances, the green dotted line indicates the amount of savings that you will receive uh, by leveraging these two features. In addition to using uh, auto scaling and EC2 uh, spot instances for your EMR cluster, you can al also orchestrate uh, the jobs to run at a certain period of time um, based on your frequency. For example, customers commonly use EMR's uh, Step API to submit jobs to their cluster. They also use AWS Lambda uh, to launch clusters using the EMR Step API and also submit jobs with the launch of the cluster. You also have the ability to use serverless options such as the step functions, which is integrated with Amazon EMR, and that will allow you to submit jobs to the existing cluster upon launching. You can also use data pipeline as well as any third party or open source uh, software such as Airflow to submit jobs to a cluster. Now the intent of using an orchestrator is to not only run your jobs at a scheduled time um, and, and fully automate the process, but also use the orchestrator as a mechanism to stop the clusters when they are idle. And this further reduces the cost that you will incur running an EMR cluster. So just to recap, there are several uh, techniques that you can use to achieve cost saving, and those include replicating your metadata store often, leveraging auto scaling, using spot uh, provisioning for your EMR clusters, and stopping the cluster when it's idle. Now let's jump a little bit into uh, storage optimization. Now storage cost savings can also be achieved through a variety of mechanisms that you might be already familiar with. For example, uh, partitioning the data and using the partitioning columns that align with the query predicates often improves the performance uh, of your analytic engines. Your, uh, if you optimize the file sizes and uh, avoid small files and make sure that your files are greater than or equal to 128 MB, that gives a better query performance as well. Uh, if you uh, optimize the file size, sizes, it also means less trips to S3, which means that you are not uh, performing 
um, too many S3 list operations. Compressing the data also reduces the storage, which means that you're not only saving cost on the storage part itself, but you're also minimizing the network traffic between Amazon S3 and Amazon EMR nodes. You can also use uh, a, a compression algorithm that allows file splitting so that when you're reading large files, they are splittable and uh, parallelized across the worker nodes on the EMR cluster. Finally, most query engines like optimized file formats like ORC and Parquet, and we highly recommend that you leverage those file formats to get a better query performance. If you want to learn more about cost estimation and optimization, I refer to the section in the detailed EMR migration guide that provides a lot more detail into all the topics that we discussed. There is also a free on-site two-day workshop that walks the customers through many aspects of migration, which include deconstruction of workloads, building a future state architecture, a migration plan and recommended next steps, as well as the professional services and partner help available for implementing these. You can also visit our website, aws.amazon.com forward slash EMR, forward slash EMR hyphen migration, or reach out to our migration help team via the email provided. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.